Hi, I'm John Weeks, and this is the Standards Tech and Science Daily Podcast. Coming up, the university opening the first Minecraft psychology lab. If you're new to the pods, hit that follow button. First up, Google's Pixel 9 devices have been unveiled, and we now know more about the AI-powered tools they come with. So let's go through some of the best. The augmented reality overlay is guiding me, and now I can take a photo. And now, if you both come over here, you will see that it is going to be processed in one single shot. In yesterday's episode of Tech and Science Daily, we learned about the Add Me feature, which makes it easier to take group photos with everyone in the same image. Well, on top of that, there's now a tool called Zoom Enhance, which uses AI to enhance the details of a photo when you zoom in. Plus, there's Video Boost, which upgrades your video to 8K resolution and improves the color, lighting, and stabilization. There's also Studio, a new text-to-image generator, as well as a reimagine feature that lets you select a section of a real photo you've taken and change it to whatever you like. Tech YouTuber MKBHD used it to change a road into a river, for example. Other AI tools on these new phones include a screenshot app that helps you find anything you've captured in a screenshot, like Wi-Fi passwords, and a tool that types up summaries of your phone conversations. All of these come as Google tries to set itself out as the AI king in the smartphone world. Scientists have sounded the alarm after a potentially dangerous virus originating in sloths was found in Europe. European Centre for Disease Control figures show that 19 imported cases of the Aura Pooch virus were reported in Europe in June and July. It's after two women, both under 30 with pre-existing health issues, died from the virus last month in Brazil. The Oropooch virus has been dubbed the sloth virus or sloth fever, as it originates from pale-throated sloths found in rainforests in northern South America, and it's usually spread through the bite of infected mosquitoes and ticks. Symptoms can include headaches, nausea, and muscle and joint pains. Now, following Elon Musk's interview with Donald Trump on X, its rival platform from Meta, Threads, has become inundated with posts from new and returning users who fled his platform. As you mentioned yesterday, if, if we could just record that conversation and post it, it would have been excellent. <laughs> and I hope we can have something like that today. Well, I think we will. I'm pretty sure we will. And congratulations, because I see you broke every record in the book with uh, so many millions of people, and it's an honor. X defectors have been introducing themselves to their fellow Threads users, looking for connections and berating the billionaire. The barrage of posts aimed at Musk and X has some users wondering whether Meta is amplifying the content though. Elsewhere, the Twitter alternative Blue Sky has also reported a surge in signups in the UK in recent days, thought to be in response to Musk's comments about the recent riots. Blue Sky says it's seen a 60% jump in general activity from accounts in the UK, with several MPs also recently joining the platform. A study has found that a quarter of women with the most lethal form of ovarian cancer could have the disease caught in its earlier stages by being tested and fast-tracked for specialist care. For the study, researchers analysed data from the Refining Ovarian Cancer Test Accuracy Scores, a study recruiting from 24 UK hospitals. Of the 1,741 patients on the fast-track pathway, 119 were diagnosed with high-grade serous ovarian cancer, and 25.2% of the group had stages 1 or 2 of the disease. Of the women diagnosed with stage 1 or 2, 93% go on to survive for more than 5 years, but survival rates fall to 13% in those diagnosed when their disease is advanced. Researchers said they hope the findings will raise awareness for more GPs to test for ovarian cancer and encourage women with symptoms such as bloating, bowel changes, appetite changes or abdominal pain to get them checked out. The state of Florida is being sued by a company that makes lab-grown meat over its decision to ban the cultivated food from going on sale. Upside Foods, who make cultivated meat in the US, sued Florida over the ban, arguing that the state's legislation is unconstitutional. In a post on LinkedIn, the company said, We've always thought it was clucked up that Florida's politicians want to choose what you eat. We disagree. What you eat should be your choice, not something determined by special interests. Upside Foods also said that its cultivated chicken has been deemed safe by the FDA and USDA, 
and said its legal action follows a petition against the ban and work behind the scenes to push back against the law before it came into effect. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signed the ban into law back in May, describing the legislation as a way of fighting back against the global elite's plan to force the world to eat meat grown in a petri dish or bugs to achieve their authoritarian goals. Coming up, city birds carrying antibiotic-resistant bacteria and the recent survey that'll make you want to clean your microwave. Stay up to date with the latest tech and science news. Hit follow during the break. Welcome back. The University of Essex says it's become the first in the UK to open a Minecraft psychology lab. Students and scientists will learn, research and build experiments within the game, and researchers will use the lab to study human behaviour in a virtual world. Dr Vinan van Tilburg is leading the project and hopes to use the lab to research how the brain processes wayfinding, solves puzzles and how people interact online. They'll also use it to explore differences between how neurotypical and neurodivergent people act online. City birds, such as crows and ducks that live near humans, can be carriers of antibiotic-resistant bacteria, according to a study. Researchers in the UK and Sweden analysed 700 samples of bacteria taken from the guts of 30 species of wild birds across eight countries. They described many of the birds as reservoirs of bacteria that are resistant to human antibiotics. Professor Samuel Shepard from Oxford University, one of the study authors, said there's an urgent need to understand how human activity is influencing the spread of zoonotic diseases and antimicrobial resistance. And finally, it turns out your microwave may have a microbiome, aka an ecosystem of bacteria, of its own. A team of microbiologists and researchers in Spain swabbed 30 microwave ovens, including some in homes, some in shared spaces such as offices, and some used in labs to heat specimens and chemical solutions. The team then cultured its samples in petri dishes to work out the type of microbes that grew. They found human skin bacteria were present in all three types of microwave oven, and a few bacteria types associated with foodborne illnesses also grew in some of the cultures from household microwaves. The researchers said it shows that some bacteria can survive inside a microwave, and they recommend that you should clean the one in your kitchen as often as you scrub your surfaces to eliminate potential bacteria. You're up to date. Come back at four o'clock and search for The Standard Podcast for the latest news and analysis. We're back tomorrow afternoon at one. See you then.